How's it going Eliminators? Today we're going to be working on a little mini bike. We have to look at a leaking oil seal as well as doing a little bit of welding and fabrication. So let's get right into it. So I got a little mini bike here and it has a knockoff clone Honda engine. So if we come over to this side of the machine, there's a little bit of an oil leak here and I'm assuming it's coming from this shaft up here. But one of the other reasons why my customer brought it in if you guys can see that the plate in which the motor mounts to has actually separated from the frame on the left side of this machine. So I'm assuming that his kid was riding this and hit something and it just broke the welds on that plate. So the first thing I'm going to do is pull this engine off. So the chain from the engine to the jack shaft has been disconnected, but because that jack shaft plate bolts to the engine, in order for me to get that off, I'm gonna have to disconnect the chain from the jack shaft back to the tire. And then it should be four bolts on the bottom of this engine that I'm gonna take off. And then from there, I can just kind of slide the engine out, disconnect any electrical wires like the ones you see right here and possibly a little throttle cable, but that's about it. Okay, so as far as the wiring here, it's pretty simple. I've unplugged this connector and I've removed a ground up here. That was just a 10 mil holding that on and then I've unplugged this wire. So our wiring is now disconnected. I'm gonna have to come up here and disconnect the throttle cables. So just a little Phillips screwdriver inside of there and I should be able to loosen that off enough to disconnect the throttle cable. As for the engine mounts, they're uh, pretty simple. It's a 10 millimeter on the bottom with a 12 millimeter up on the top, the nut that holds it on. So I'm using just a 10 millimeter socket and a 12 millimeter wrench and I just have one left to get off and then I should be able to slide this engine out just enough so I can get a Phillips head screwdriver in there to remove the throttle cable. Okay, so I got all four engine bolts off, but before we can go ahead and take this engine off, I just gotta take that chain off. So what you're gonna wanna find is your master link, which I've found it right there. And you just wanna take just a standard flathead screwdriver, just pop it back until it gets to the point where it is now. And you should be able to just drop that off, pull your secondary off, just like that, and then push your master link through, provided it's not terribly rusty and then there we go our chain is now disconnected just make sure you don't lose any of the pieces there that's why I like working with uh, just a piece of tin laid down galvanized steel whatever you want so pulling the engine slightly off to the right side gave me just enough room to pull my throttle cable off so now I'm ready to take this engine put it up on the workbench and we'll have a little closer look at it so I got the engine up on the workbench here I'm just kind of taking a look at where the oil could possibly be coming from we have a little bit of oil coming from the overhead valve cover here, and it's pretty wet under this plate here, which means for the oil to get here, it would have had to either come from here or farther up, which means it's leaking from in behind here. So I'm gonna have to take this clutch off and most likely this plate here so that I can remove it to get access at the engine. And then I'm just gonna go around and make sure all these bolts are tight Maybe it's just a case of uh, the bolts loosening off and oil's leaking out. And if it's not the gasket around the outer case, then it's most likely the oil seal on the crankshaft. They go all the time. That's generally what happens on these machines. On second thought, it might be an easier issue than what I thought. So it turns out there's an oil fill plug, I guess you can call it. And it's actually located up underneath the jack shaft here. So this is your jack shaft over here. And that doesn't connect to the engine, that's just you know by itself and it's hooked up to this plate here. It's all wet right around here and it's not really wet anywhere else. Like it's not leaking from the front up under there. It's leaking mostly from back here. So it could be just a case of uh, this cap coming loose and I can actually show you an engine that had this exact same problem. So I'm just back here in the little storage area of my shop. And I don't know if you guys will remember this. I've had this engine for about a year and a half and this comes off of a snow blower that I purchased for $150. Guy snapped a connecting rod on this thing and I've just never got around to fixing it because whenever I need a snow blower, I just grab one that we've fixed up and that we're reselling. I normally have a lot of snow blowers at my disposal so I've never got around to fixing this one because this was going to be my personal machine. But what ended up happening on this machine is the oil cap on the side over there came loose and the oil slowly dripped out of the engine and the crankshaft ended up seizing to the connecting rod and it snapped a connecting rod. So this little dipstick here, 
they just loosen off ever so slightly and due to vibration or whatnot but as you're using your machine you want to go ahead and just check these make sure they're tight now before I drain the oil or wash this I want to take the clutch assembly off just so that I can get access at those bolts for this jack shaft plate here in case I need it. So a 12 mil socket and this bolt will come right off. Once you get that bolt off, it looks like we have a little circlip here. So you're gonna need a circlip removal tool, which I have right here. Basically you go in, open that up and that'll come off. And then we should be able to slide this clutch assembly right off. That came off nice and easy. And we should be able to just slide this off now. There we go. And this is a good time to show you guys how a centrifugal clutch works. So centrifugal clutch just goes by centrifugal force, which means as the engine generates motion, these little pads, which are located here and here, they extend outwards. And as those pads extend outwards, they end up grabbing to the inside of this little drum here which then transfers power from the engine to this hub which has your sprocket hooked to it and that's fixed and then that transfers power from this sprocket via a chain to this sprocket and then with a little gear reduction here from the jack shaft transfers the power from this sprocket back to the sprocket on the rear tire so if you ever have a machine where you're getting on the throttle and it's just not going chances are it is worn out pads on your centrifugal clutch but now I have a little better access at the four bolts that hold this uh, jack shaft plate into position and if I want to remove that I can just go ahead and do so if I go up under here with my finger that's all pretty dry there's a lot of dust and that's just from that centrifugal clutch but I should be able to remove that bolt there and the jack shaft plate is now loose so we're looking at the side of the engine here here's our main shaft and like I said before just take your finger around there feel it it's pretty dry and if we zoom out we can see there's a couple reeds and whatnot but this is where our oil is coming from right here that is all wet okay so I'm pretty happy now check it out guys my theory was right I knew it that was loose these are always a problem snow blowers these Honda engines you know they have these and I would like to see the manufacturer plug those if the design of the machine ends up covering this area so that you can't get at that plug I would like to see them put a metal or aluminum plug in there so what I'm going to end up doing is once I drain the oil and wash this thing I'm going to take this out and I'm probably going to put some red thread locker in there and I'm going to jam that thing in there as tight as I can without cracking it and we're going to make sure that thing never comes out again. And then if he ever needs to change his oil, he can just take this one off. That one has the dipstick right there. And just by looking at this, because this thing has been sitting at my place for about two weeks now, and it's been dripping a lot of oil. And I can tell you right now, that oil level is right there, guys. See that? So this thing had way too much oil in it. No wonder it was leaking. And I also went ahead and tightened his overhead valve cover bolts because they were all loose, all four of them. So I'll go and get this thing cleaned up now. So I got this engine all cleaned up. It looks pretty spotless and there is no oil leaking out of the back. So that's exactly what it was, guys. Just a leaky oil cap and probably a little bit too much oil. So like I said, I'm gonna drain the oil from this. I'm gonna wash up that plate and get that bolted back up. And then we can go ahead and take a look at this issue here which is the busted plate. So you guys can see it kind of just pulled up just like a sardine can, just opened right up and split all the little welds that were on there. So we're gonna have to go and grind that maybe and, and smooth it up and lay it back down flat and then we'll go in there and lay a nice bead in there. Okay, so I've pressure washed the base of this frame here just to get all the dirt and crud off of it. And we can see that where a couple of the tacks were, they've kind of busted up. So I'm just gonna grind them away just so that I can flatten that piece down. And up at the front here, it actually kind of goes in nice and flat to the point where I can possibly go in and tack it up underneath. But before I weld it, I'm gonna have to take the paint down. So I'm just using my little die grinder here with a, a sandpaper disc on there, and that should be good enough to uh, take the paint away. And then I'm just using a couple quick clamps, and then that'll kind of hold things together so that I can get a couple tacks in. So like I was saying, this is the spot that I'm catching on. There's a little tack here, and it broke off. 
and that spot doesn't go flat but up here at the top I can actually get it to go flat so I'm just gonna go in and try to take away a little bit of this weld here and then kind of go in and weld it where it is flat and then grind away anything that's catching and then kind of hammer it down because I want to get this as flat as possible so that when I bolt the engine back onto here the chain lines up and everything's in the same location because if it's tilted up like this and the chain won't line up to the rear wheel sprocket and you could run into an issue where the chain falls off when you're riding. Okay, so I got this plate looking half decent. I got it to the point where it pretty much feels level across the whole way like you know it was where it was when they first welded it on. So I'm just going to put a couple tacks on here on this side just to hold things in place. We can see that there's a large crack at the back here and that goes from about this corner up to here and this has also been welded in lots of places. There's a crack here and there's a massive crack over here that somebody tried to weld. So this thing's definitely had some work done to it prior to me getting it. And the problem was that whoever welded this, they didn't even grind down their welds, which means the engine was bolted on top of these welds. And like I was saying before, I have to make sure that this engine, when it sits on this plate, is level. Uh, not necessarily true level, but at least level you know this way and then this way as well it's uh, left or right that I have to worry about and uh, also angular like this right because that'll change how the chain goes from the jack shaft to the back there so you have to make sure that kind of the sprockets line up even though it goes from the engine to a jack shaft and then the jack shaft to the back you still have to make sure that everything's lined up so that your chain doesn't pop off when you're riding it like I said I'm gonna tack weld it just to hold things in place and then I can go around and hit it with a hammer wherever I'm high or pop it back up wherever I'm low and then I'll move on to the other side. And I should note that the base of the engine is about uh, just over four inches. So that means that when I do my welds along the edges here, I don't have to grind them flush. It's just the welds that are underneath where the mounting holes go. That's the only thing that really has to be flat. Okay, so trying to fit the other side in, this piece has just completely come loose. So at this point, I gotta flip it on its end, grind the underside of this plate, and then I gotta weld this plate together on the bottom side so that I don't start putting weld up and building material to where that engine is supposed to bolt to. Cause like I said, I gotta have that flat. It's even cracked back here, you know? So like that whole section from here to there and up is just gonna come apart basically, so. I'm kind of left with uh, no other option than to weld it on the on the bottom side of this because that's that's got to be strong, you know. The engine will just flop around, especially if I weld just up here and over there. The engine will kind of flop right here, you know. It'll be it'll be weak, and then if that snaps off later on, then the whole thing will be weak. So, and on closer inspection, he's even broken the welds off in the corner. So it's like this whole plate is just being held on by this little stitch right there. That's literally the only thing holding this entire plate on. I mean, this thing is, is pretty bad. It's way worse than I thought. See, I didn't know that someone had previously welded this before I did because I, I couldn't see it. You know, I had to grind down all the paint and everything else to actually get a good visual on it. My customer also said that he only wants to spend $200 on this repair. Just the time alone that I'm gonna spend fabricating this and welding it. It's a lot more work than uh, what I previously thought. Okay, so I'm at the point now where I've done quite a few stitches along the edge here. You might think that, like, why wouldn't I just run a solid bead along there? But the thing is, the heat builds up, and you guys could probably see that I've blown through there. And I'm trying to keep the heat high enough 
so that the weld kind of melts in so you guys can see that I've, I've laid a bead from there to there and I've gone in with enough heat and not a lot of wire speed because the more wire speed means the more filler you're putting in and I'm trying to just fuse the metal and what's happened was there's so much heat build up because the metal's getting so thin in some of the areas that I've blown through there and I've blown through right there so then I ended up losing this little piece here and you guys can kind of see where I'm going around and tacking it now these welds down here they don't look great at all and that's because I was running a higher heat like I was doing here and I was blowing through the tubing because this thing's been welded before like it's has been repaired before so there was a lot of weld along the edge that I had to grind away and doing that took some material off which means all the metal around this tube is now thinner but I'm doing the best I can and these welds you know they might not look the best but they will hold I've just had to like grind down some of my undercut on the side there because like I said you know I I could turn the heat up and, and make a weld that looks a little nicer and do some stitching but then I end up blowing through and then when I blow through now it just makes more work for me to do so now I have to go and, and clean all that up so I might weld the back side up now and I've got it as flat as I can get it like this thing you guys saw was pretty mangled I'm just trying to do what I can to strengthen this up a little bit and then once I have this side finished then I'll move on to that side and start welding that okay so welding is now complete I've got welds at the back there and this side I was able to lay down some much nicer beads it's looking pretty good I didn't get the top little corner there because that's pretty high of a gap to bridge and the other side you know I let you can see I had to do like multiple passes and I don't really want to do that this thing's solid I don't think it's going anywhere for now it's looking all right and this thing is fairly flat you guys can see I'm just slightly high on that one back edge but I might be able to go in and hammer that down a little bit but for the most part we're fairly flat along the edge so hopefully fingers crossed hopefully the engine lines up and everything's good okay so I got the bottom side welded up now same thing as before I can't really lay a bead in there as uh, much as I would like to because it just burns through and again I don't want to create more work for myself so I've just gone and done a couple tacks here and there just to uh, hold things together but it's pretty solid so I've gone in here and welded welded I might just clean that up and break those little pieces of wire off I've tried to line up the mounting holes as best I can and make sure that everything's flat so I got it paint it up that looks a little nicer now at least it won't rust so with a little bit of paint it looks a little something like that not bad I would have liked to cut out a whole new piece but I'm just working with what I got okay so I got the engine up on my workbench I just have a old little cooking tray here that I use to drain oil into this engines light enough I can just pick it up and drain it out of the front port there and here's the dipstick this is the gray one you guys can see very dirty in desperate need of an oil change so we're gonna get this drained out and get some fresh oil into there now it also might be a little hard to see but I've got some red Permatex thread locker on there shout out to Permatex for supplying that to us and we're gonna be threading this thing back in there and we're gonna make sure make absolutely sure that we got that thing tight without damaging the plastic threads but we want to make sure that this piece doesn't come out ever again. Okay, so we got it in there pretty tight now. You guys can probably just pick up the little bit of red coming out of there as we tighten it up. And I'm just using a pair of channel lock pliers here just to make sure that's snug, which it is. And hopefully that never leaks again. Okay, so if we look at the side of this engine, it says right on here, HS168F-2. Now that's a Heisen Power or Lonson six and a half horsepower Honda clone so this is like your regular GX 160 Honda clone engine and it takes 0 0.6 liters of oil you can see right there which is 600 milliliters and we're gonna be using some Quaker State 10w30 for that now on this engine they even give you a little diagram and it shows the oil should only go up to about the top there and it should cover just a couple of the bottom threads there and if we look in here, I'll get my little light. We can see that the oil is coming up to the bottom threads there. 
but it doesn't come up all the way to the top. So that's perfect. We're ready to put that cap back on, tighten that up, and just wipe down any little oil that might have spilled off to the side because I know it's a little tricky. Now would also be the perfect time to go ahead and just check to make sure that your oil drain plugs on either side of your engine are nice and tight. Again, we've used some red thread locker on the back one because you can't access that once the jack shaft plate is on. And we've used the pair of channel lock pliers just to snug that up. And I've also done the same to the one up top. You don't wanna over tighten them. You just wanna make sure they're snug so that this little rubber gasket in here seals and is compressed and makes a nice seal. Okay, so the next step for this is getting the jack shaft plate back on. I've removed the four 10 millimeter bolts holding it on and I've laid out my chain here so that the master link, which is right here, is facing forward. So you always want this piece at the front and that piece at the back. This way, when the chain is rotating like this, if you ever get a stick or something that hits it, it'll actually force that master link farther on rather than if it was the opposite way and a stick hit that, it would actually pop your uh, master link clip off. So you want it like that. So this chain will be taken and put over top just like that once I get the clutch and everything lined up. But for now, it's gonna be the jack shaft plate on and then I can go ahead and put all of my pieces back together from here. So we got the jack shaft plate back on. Now we're gonna go piece by piece with this. So I've kind of laid it out the way that everything comes off. So this little guy, that went on there first. That slides on. I also took a little bit of oil and just uh, wiped it onto the shaft there just to make sure nothing seizes up. And then we can take our clutch. Now when you go to put your clutch assembly on, there is a key inside of a keyway there. You can see it up there. So you wanna line that key up with the keyway on your shaft. So we should be able to rotate this until it slides into position and then just go ahead and give it a little turn. Make sure you're locked in there, which we are. Okay, and then once that's on, we can go ahead and get our clutch drum on. And then we can take our C-clip with our C-clip pliers we can go ahead and get that on as well. You wanna make sure that locks into place. So what you wanna do here is just kinda of press up against it, make sure it's not coming off. And then we can go ahead and get our bolt, and then that secures the clutch into position. Okay, so it looks a little something like this now with the chain on, but I am missing the tensioner that goes under here. There's a big rubber puck, so if we take a look at this image here, shout out to Marcel's workshop for that. He did a video on a conversion from one of these to a torque converter, belt driven torque converter. So it's supposed to have a big rubber puck here that goes in the bottom and just keeps tension on your chain. I don't have that, so we're just gonna have to leave it like this for now. That's how I got it. And my customer can go ahead and buy that and put it on. It's pretty simple. It just is a little plate that goes up under here and uh, just goes onto this bolt here, and then you go ahead and just adjust it and tighten your chain. So I'm gonna put this engine onto the frame the opposite way that I took it off. It's gonna go in sideways. I'm gonna hook up the throttle cable first and then kind of scoot it over and get the engine bolts mounted up. And then we'll plug in the electrical connectors over here at the back last. First thing, get the throttle cable hooked up. You can use a 10 millimeter wrench to hold the nut and a Phillips head screwdriver. So now just pull your throttle, make sure your throttle works, we can see it does. And then now I'm gonna slide the engine over and then I'll get my engine bolts, which are right there, four of them, into position. We'll kind of line this thing up and then I can go ahead and put the rear chain on. You know, I tell you, I'm putting a lot of work into this machine for just $200, but we got the engine bolted up. The rear chain has tension on it, so let's have a look. So it's looking okay from this side. Everything looks the same. I have all four of my engine bolts mounted and tightened up. Everyone went in without a problem. I positioned the engine. I got my master link on the chain. Again, master link, you want the loop on the front side with the little open end clip on the back. That's pretty much as good as it's gonna get. That's it. 
I have a little plastic cover to screw back on there and the little chain guard at the back here that's right there and that goes on with two little eight millimeter screws so I'll get that back on and this machine's pretty much done now I would have liked to taken it out for a spin because my customer said that it did run but uh, I don't want to ride it like that that will probably wreck something even worse than it already is and I really don't want to do that so I'm not going to be riding this thing for a video. This is kind of just me going through working on one of these little things. Okay, so I got this mini bike outside now. Like I said, guys, I was planning on taking this thing for a spin, but without that chain tensioner, I really don't want to do any damage to it. I have reconnected all the electrical cables out front. I've gone over and made sure that each one of my bolts are tight on the engine mounts. And this thing is ready to go back to my customer. As far as whether the engine runs or not, he said that it did. So I'm going to take his word for it. Everything else is hooked up. And the only thing that I haven't reconnected was that little mounting bracket off the back. Because now that the uh, panel has been welded, it's kind of out of position. So I just took that off. But with those four bolts on that jack shaft plate, it should still be strong enough to hold up to any abuse that might be put on this thing. So just for my final thoughts, all in all, not bad. I did spend quite a bit of time on it, but at the end of the day, we were able to get the job done and my customer will be happy. Like I said before, as for whether or not the engine runs, that's up to him, you know, he said it did run, so I have to take his word for it. And he can go ahead and put on a little chain tensioner, that should be easy. And then he could get it back to his kid and just tell him to stay away from tree stumps and anything else he can run into. So that's it for today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, think about leaving me a thumbs up, you know, it really helps me out. You can click here to subscribe and you can click over here to watch one of my previous videos. I upload every single week, so be sure to come on back and check the channel out next week. And as always guys, thanks for watching.